What's going on guys, Vic VP back, one of the Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we are looking at a buyer's guide, talking about RetroPie Raspberry Pi arcade builds. So there's a couple of videos coming up as far as buyer's guide. Again, I do get a lot of comments and I get a lot of questions, uh, especially on OfferUp, Facebook and all that. This right here, this video is going to be discussing Raspberry Pi RetroPie builds. Um, Long story short, there's three different systems that you could get for an arcade build. You got your Pandora's box, which is very easy, user-friendly. Second is medium level, which is the Raspberry Pi Retro Pi build that we're going to be talking about today. And then the expert level, which is hyperspin build using computers, Windows, PC-based systems. Now, in this one here, we're going to be talking about the Raspberry Pi. So if you do see my ads, you're looking at around 15,000 games with a Raspberry Pi build. Um, every system has its advantages and disadvantages. Pandora's box is very user-friendly, especially the interface. Raspberry Pi is great. It does have a lot of retro consoles, a lot of retro arcade stuff. It is missing a couple of the key arcade games, such as NFL Blitz and Killer Instinct. Games like that, I do always suggest that you do need the expert level, which is a hyperspin PC-based system. Without further ado, let's discuss the Raspberry Pi setup. So we're going to get out of full screen mode. We're going to go right into it. This right here, again, is running a Raspberry Pi image, 128 gigabyte SD card. Uh, again, my Pi image right now is the 3B+. Plus. I have not yet gone to the Pi 4, only because I do like my attract mode. It looks like hyperspin. Um, so right now, I'm still running Raspberry Pi 3B plus builds. We're going to take a look real quick. This is emulation station. You're not going to need to really know these terms if you're a customer, but I am in this menu just to kind of show off the systems in this. So at the top right of the screen, you can see that, that there is arcade. There's 2,272 arcade games. But before we start, this is all the games you can see at the top right, 15,231 games. The Raspberry Pi, you're ranging from Super Nintendo, the NES, Sega Genesis. There is a couple of Dreamcast games. There is a couple of N64 games on this. So there is a lot of retro gaming. You're not going to find PlayStation 2. You're not going to find really much PSP. I have like one or two games on this. Um, but basically, I always say anything before the N64, this will play pretty well. We're going to be going later on looking at some Dreamcast the most common question I do get is Marvel versus Capcom 2. But let's go slow. Right now in this list, we're going to look at just the systems alone. So you got your arcade, Atari 2600, the Atari 5200. You can see at the top right of the screen the number of games for each system as we go down. I'm not going to really waste too much time talking about every single system, but at least you can kind of see it. Final Burn Alpha is a, another version of MAME or the arcade emulator. We've got family computer, the Game Gear. So you do also have handhelds on this. We have the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, the Game Boy Color, and Television, Sega's. Again, I'm just going to go down nice and easy. N64, you got 303 games. Neo Geo. Again, there's the NES Pocket, PC Engine. A couple of ports we'll look at later on. PSP, PlayStation One. You got your SC3000, Sega 32X. Sega CD, again, I'm going to go nice and easy. I don't want to talk too much because this right now is emulation station. This basically is the easiest way for a customer right now that is looking at a Raspberry Pi build. They could at least see the games or I should say the systems in this. So as you can see, there is no GameCube. There is no PC games. There is no PS2, PS3 that you're going to need a PC build for. So now that, again, is basically your main systems and the game count on this. But when you do get a build with a Raspberry Pi, this is not the actual interface that you will see. This is running something called a track mode, which makes things look way nicer. So let me run a track mode real quick, and I'm going to show you what you actually would receive when you get a arcade cabinet from me. All right, so now we are in a track mode. Basically, once you plug in your arcade cabinet, you're going to get a beautiful looking front end which we are is known as a track mode basically it just it just looks great as you could see big thing to understand i'm going to definitely raise the volume and such so you could see exactly how a track mode runs and everything again keep in mind this is a raspberry pi it is not a pc this doesn't have any ram it doesn't have any graphics cards so 
as far as navigating a track mode, you will kind of get a slight minor delay. You might even hear a little bit of an audio kind of stutter, which I'll bump up the volume on it. But the big thing I just wanted to show off is how exactly this looks. So as you can see, we do have an arcade wheel. We have consoles. So as you saw before, we have Super Nintendo and the NES. It basically makes things much neater. Handheld, you got the Game Boy Advance and stuff. The big thing is the collections wheel, which we're going to look at later on. Basically, if you're the type that just wants to play Street Fighter games, in the collections wheel, it will basically just show you all the Street Fighter games. So it is very nicely made and it's very nicely organized so i'm going to go into arcade keep in mind most of my arcade cabinets are two player arcade sticks but i do have four player arcade games on this such as the simpsons tmnt and even nba jam very popular games so i do have options for two player games and four player games so if you do get a two player arcade cabinet i will always give you two wireless ps3 style controllers i always say ps3 style controllers because they are not real playstation controllers as you can see it is kind of like a knockoff it is not a real playstation 3 controller but it feels and looks almost like it the big deal is that it is wireless so that's the best part of this uh basically if you have an arcade cabinet there is no wire connected to this controller we are looking at wireless stuff so I'm going to go into Arcade Wheel. Right now I'm using my PlayStation controller to navigate. In reality, you will be able to use your arcade sticks to navigate this menu. I always make tutorials whenever I make arcade builds. So if you do purchase a build for me, you'll see the tutorial. Now that I'm in the arcade, the main wheel really is MAME. That is your arcade emulator. All the arcade games are within MAME. You do have also categories inside of this. So for example, all the Neo Geo stuff. Capcom 1, Capcom Play System 1, 2, and 3. Um, you even got Atari list, Capcom Data E stuff. So inside of this wheel, basically, now it kind of categorizes everything. But if you want to keep it simple, you might as well go into MAME. It'll have all of your arcade games in it. So if I press the X button, I am now within 2,200 arcade games. Now, within this wheel, as you can see, beautiful artwork. You do have videos on your left. You have logos on the right. It looks way better than what I was in before, which is Emulation Station. Again, everything is about appearance, especially when you show it off to friends. It's just so much easier to see names and stuff. So, again, there are a lot of shortcuts. This is kind of the plus and minus side to every system. For the Raspberry Pi build, you can't really specifically search for a game like you could with a Pandora's box or a Hyperspin build. But luckily, there are shortcuts to skip our letters. So for example, if I was going to look for, um, I don't know, we'll look for a Metal Slug. So instead of me just holding up on the joystick waiting to go to M, I'm basically going to be able to skip letters. As you can see, I am in L. I'm going to be able to go down. And again, there are quite a few games. So you just hold down the stick here. But at least we're in the M range. And if I keep going down a little bit, you could see our Metal Slug option. So again, as far as finding your game, I do have mostly, I would say, 95% of the games that you're thinking about are on a Raspberry Pi build. Granted, Raspberry Pi builds do not have high graphic games such as NFL Blitz, Killer Instinct, and Tekken. I do not have these on the system only because... Tekken, NFL Blitz, it's very graphic intense. If you played it on a Raspberry Pi, it would slow down. Games like that, I highly always suggest you do need a PC hyperspin build. So just keep that in mind. Your main arcade classics definitely are on this. Miss Pac-Man, somebody asked me for Gauntlet, somebody asked me does this have Galaga, does it have The Simpsons, does it have uh, Galaxian, does it have... Uh, uh, Zaxxon, it's, there's, there's, trust me, it, it will be there. As long as it's like 8-bit, 16-bit games, it most definitely is there. Somebody said, hey, Vic, does this have the WWF uh, WrestleFest? So it does. Again, I'm basically utilizing a couple of shortcuts right now to navigate quickly to get to WWF, for example. So I'm in the Ws. I'm going to go down. And again, there are a lot of games. There it goes. So we have WWF Wrestle Fest. Awesome. So again, that's your main stuff as far as arcade. The cool part about this arcade build, like I said, games like WrestleFest, for example, these are four-player games. So I do have these ROMs set to four-player. So if you do have the two arcade sticks, those are players one and two. 
And then players three and four is going to be utilizing the PlayStation controller. Um, big thing, honestly, is NBA Jam. I actually have two versions of NBA Jam. I'm going to go show you real quick because I'm not going to talk too much on this. But again, people do like it. I do have two versions of NBA Jam. There's your regular NBA Jam, and then there's Tournament Edition. So it's really great is the original NBA Jam here is set to two players. So people do like to play two player with the arcade sticks. This ROM is set to two player. That means player one versus player two. Tournament Edition NBA Jam is four players. So that means players one and two are the arcade sticks. They are actually on the same team. Players three and four is going to be utilizing the PlayStation controller. So again, it does go in-depth. Quite a few four-player games, a lot of arcade games. Again, I'm stressing this right here a lot because you're buying an arcade cabinet, so you do want your arcade games. This is it. This will definitely have most of all of your arcade games that you're thinking about, minus the high graphic games. Some people say, hey, Vic, what about Simpsons Bowling? No, this does not play Simpsons Bowling. Now, the big advantage to Raspberry Pi builds is that aside from, again, our arcade games, this will play retro consoles. So, again, Super Nintendo, the NES. Again, as you can see, inside of a track mode, we do have a nice decorative style where it's going to show you the game system. If I go in it, it's going to show you all the games. On the bottom right of the screen, you can see the game count. 886 NES games. I mean, every NES game you could think of, it is definitely here. Yes, this will play Mario Kart. Um, this will play, you know, Mario Bros. 2, uh, Mario Bros. 3. So, again, NES is NES. The big thing you have to understand, though, and it's a very big thing that people don't really understand or really think about, NES, Super Nintendo, all of the consoles, you always used to play on an actual controller. You never played them on an arcade stick. Um, so in all honesty, these consoles are set to arcade sticks, which to some people, it's an okay experience. They would rather play it with the controller. It's an easy, it's an easy, excuse me, it's an easy controller configuration very quickly to set that up. Um, a lot of people say, hey, Vic, um, I do see this plays N64, uh, but I can't play N64 pretty well on arcade sticks. Yes. You got to remember the N64, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. It had like 10 buttons on it. Your arcade panel, depending on which one you get, most likely will have six buttons. So an arcade panel is missing four other buttons. Games and systems like the N64, even the Dreamcast, you're going to most likely want to play with the PlayStation controllers. Now, real quick, because I am discussing N64. Uh, N64, as you can see, we do have like Killer Instinct Gold, but it's the N64 version. Um, N64 out of 303 games, I'm going to probably say half of them will play smoothly. Again, a Raspberry Pi is a very kind of minimalistic. It's not, it's not that computer spec out to run a system like this flawlessly. Um, I have videos in the past of me doing like um, uh, Super Smash Brothers or Mario Kart. It'll play it fairly well, but if I play, for example, Goldeneye on it, you will definitely hear some audio stutter. So keep that in mind. Yes, Vic, you have N64. Wow. Um, it's not going to play it flawlessly. Again, I do say once you're going into like N64 realm, you really should be looking at a PC build. See, we do our experiencing audio stutter. So again, it had GoldenEye. Will it play GoldenEye flawlessly? Not really. No, I'm going to be really honest. It will not. Again, I like to always show people. I know, Vic, why do you have it on the Pi? Basically, the Pi, the next step is to bring it to the Pi 4, which is a little bit faster. Um, but again, it's a handful of games that will sound just like this. It will give you the stutter. I just want to kind of at least play it so you can kind of see it. And as you can see, you can hear the audio stutter on it. Figure out my buttons. Again, 
just like to always show up because again, people will try to play these games and then experience the stutter on us. But yes, there's an example of a N64 game that is not really meant for a Raspberry Pi. Yes, you do have it. Most of them do work pretty good. WWF series is pretty good. Um, Mario Kart, even Super Mario 64 runs pretty good on it. So again, there's your N64 side of it. The most common frequently asked game is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Let me lower this a little bit. And again, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I do have in the Dreamcast wheel. So if you go to Dreamcast, as you can see, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, we're going to start it up. This is running Redream. Um, again, emulator talk. Uh, basically, I'm going to bump this up a little bit. You're always going to get this kind of intro screen about entering a date. You could just kind of skip across. For the most part, uh, Dreamcast does run pretty well. It's just honestly on arcade sticks, uh, the button layout is not really that great. It is not like the actual arcade was, such as hitting the top three on the arcade sticks really initiated a super. On this, it is not that really at all. So you're going to have to get used to it. I'm going to bump this up. And now, also keep in mind, I am playing this on a controller right now, but this really would be set for the arcade sticks. The big thing is to kind of just see how the graphics are, how is the audio. You can hear the minor slowdown. And yes, what you are hearing with that audio stutter, that is the system. Again, real way for Marvel's Capcom 2 should really be on the arcade sticks. Now again, me using a PlayStation controller, I'm trying to figure out right now how to initiate a super. Because I do have three. I'm trying to initiate the super right now. And even with me just kind of spazzing out on the buttons, I am not figuring out my front combo for a super. But again, just so you could hear the actual audio to it. Now keep in mind, out of 15,000 games, we do have a handful. I would say, you know, 300. I'm going to really count like all the N64 games. You know, about 300 games. Yes, they will run. Will they run flawlessly? No. And as you can see right now, I'm just trying to initiate a super, and I'm just kind of wailing on these buttons, and I can't seem to initiate the super. Uh, again, the real arcade uh, emulator would have been the top three buttons, would have initiated the super. Um, but just real quick, wanted to definitely show off how um, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 runs on this. Easy. We're gonna exit out. We'll come back to the menu. Awesome. The other one I do want to show you off real quick, only because I never really showed it off. PlayStation One, Marvel vs. SNK. Let's see how this runs. And again, this is a PlayStation One game. Capcom. Which move do you like? Form up your team. Again, for customers that are very into like PlayStation 1 and 64, the only real way to enjoy them is 
honestly a PC build. Target confirmed! Kind of see graphic spray issues right there with Ryu. Which some people might not really matter too much, might not mind it. Let's see. See, this game right here is actually utilizing game fun. This is an game fun game right here. So, you know, playing on a arcade layout is not really going to be too enjoyable. Yes, you'll be able to make it work, but again, PlayStation emulation right now, it wasn't meant for the arcade, so just keep that in mind. There you go. Just a long time. So now, as we go real quick again, those are your consoles. Let me lower this a little bit. Again, really cool stuff. Even, honestly, this is what I do run with the mini NES killer. Playing consoles, old school retro consoles, is great on a Raspberry Pi because all the games are there. I was a big fan on the Sega 32X. Um, if it's not the Sega 30X, I always get that mixed up with uh, the Genesis. Uh, it's either the Mega Drive or the Master System. Um, do 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 do. I think it was the Master System. Uh, Master System had a great Contra game. So if you ever wanted to play that again, 334 Master System games on this. Let's see if we can find my Contra. And again, so many systems. It is definitely cool. Looks like my Contra game is not exactly in this wheel. It might be inside of my Mega Drive wheel. So let's just check it out real quick. Again. That's a prime example of, hey, Vic, I'm looking for Contra. You don't have it. It might be an actual not, you know, this right here says Sega Genesis on it. So I should have been on this. Yeah, here we go. So it's Contra Hard Corps. This is a great game growing up. Even uh, Beavis and Butthead, uh, great. Another great game, which was um, a pretty awful game because you really couldn't beat it. But it is definitely cool to see that it's there. So... Again, look at that. Sega Genesis, 941 games. But again, games like this, you can see right there, the controller there, there's three buttons on that. So this would work on arcade sticks. Is it practical to play it on arcade sticks? Not really, but at least you could play it on the arcade sticks. Now going back real quick, we'll take a look at the handhelds. So again, you got your Game Boy Advance. You have, you know, Game Boy Color, the Game & Watch, the Virtual Boy 2. Again, really cool gems on this. Honestly, me personally, I'm on the Game Boy Advance side a lot. You got 1,100 Game Boy Advance games, which is a lot of games. So if I go and skip letters, uh, you know, you got some Yu-Gi-Oh stuff going on. Really cool stuff. And again, Game Boy Advance handhelds is handhelds. Luckily, you're not going to find a handheld that has more than six buttons. So playing this kind of console on arcade sticks is pretty fair. I'm going to go back real quick, and now we're going to talk about the Collections Wheel. Collections Wheel is great. Basically, categorizes everything. So if you're the type that wants to play all the Donkey Kong games, if you go into Donkey Kong, let's say, it will find all the Donkey Kong games within the entire system. What does that mean? As you can see next to me here, this is the Game Boy Advance Donkey Kong. We got ColecoVision Donkey Kong. We got the Game Boy NES. Anything that had the word Donkey Kong in it, another classic gem. Donkey Kong Country for the SNES, it's there. So it's really cool. When it comes to the collections wheel, it does make things great. I have a couple of customers that are big on Disney for their little girls. You got a lot of games here, 133 Disney games, Toy Story, Pocahontas. Again, taking all the systems and putting it into one wheel to make things easy. Um, the most common one, honestly, is the beat-em-up wheel. So... You know, your classic beat-em-ups where you're walking on the screen, you're going side-scroller style, beating up people like X-Men and stuff. You will find some fighters, as you can see here, X-Men versus Street Fighter. Um, 
against some fighters there also you're technically beating up each other so if you are the type that wants barbie you want to do um zelda Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, a couple of the wwf games if you're into that just the wrestling ones it's there so with this wheel it just makes things easy so for example if i want to do street fighter only this will find all the street fighter games in it there's a, there's 46 street fighter games on it and again ranging from arcade to super nintendo and the nes a lot of games as you can see like the game boy 2 again very big advantage to the raspberry pi basically categorizing things to make things honestly easy you go into star wars let's see what's up with star wars we got 36 so we got like lego star wars for the game boy advance a couple of the old school retro arcade ones too very cool stuff again very big advantage with the raspberry pi I'm a big Simpsons fan. You can see in my videos with my pinball machine. Finds all the Simpsons games. There's 22 of them. These are classic games, obviously. So again, pretty great advantage to the Raspberry Pi. Um, hacks, shoot 'em ups are all little stuff. I also have Cody on this, but honestly, it's outdated. The big thing I do want to show off is just real quick, I'm going to bump the volume on this so you can kind of hear what I mean by when you navigate. So you kind of get, again, I'm, if I press up, you get a slight delay. Nothing major, nothing too crazy. But you kind of hear like that little kind of static kind of garble, which isn't that drastic. It's really not that bad. Now, another great thing with a Raspberry Pi build is basically these systems are set up where you could just plug them in and leave them on. I've left Raspberry Pi builds on for, you know, a year straight so you could leave these on just like a pandora's box build pc builds i do not suggest leaving them on um what's great with this and that's why it's called a track mode is if you don't touch any of the controllers for about 35 seconds it's going to launch a track mode basically it's going to just cycle nice video clips of the games within this wheel so right now i'm in arcade if i walk away from the actual arcade cabinet Instead of just hearing Miss Pac-Man for hours and hours, after 35 seconds, it will launch a track mode. So again, I'm not pressing anything right now, and we're going to wait for it basically to launch a track mode. Again, it should be around 35 to 45 seconds that I do set that manually. If you want it faster, if you want it after 10 seconds, that is doable. So again, leaving your controllers alone, it's going to launch, there we go, a track mode. So it's pretty cool, honestly. With this, you'll find games that you've never heard of, games that you never even thought existed, and you might be like, hey, I want to play this game. So it's really great. It basically shows video clips. You can see there it even has the game title and all that. So this is one big advantage to the Raspberry Pi, um, basically a track mode, uh, giving off some very nice artwork. If you are inside, let's say, the Super Nintendo wheel, it would show off Super Nintendo games. Right now, it is showing off all the arcade games because I'm in arcade. So if I, let's say, go back and let's just say I go into consoles and I want to do, let's say, the Mega Drive, um, I'm going to real quick, just for video purposes, I'll bump this instead of 35, I'll put this to, uh, f I don't know, five seconds just to show you exactly what I mean by what it would look like. So now this is set to five seconds. So after five seconds of not touching the controls, it's going to launch a track mode. There we go. Now this game is inside of Sega Genesis. So that's what's also great. I do have a couple of customers that want cabinets just for, let's say, Super Nintendo. So if you leave Super Nintendo wheel, it'll just show all the Super Nintendo games in a track mode. Again, a very big advantage. Pandora's box is just a list. So it just kind of clocks down each list you're not going to find major consoles on a pandora's box build pc builds will definitely have everything you see here and more so again just going over for a possible customer when i talk about a raspberry pi this is what i'm talking about so again another game basically once the video snippet ends it's going to show off another video so again very cool stuff with a track mode um if, let's just say, I'm in this menu here, which is our main wheel menu where you can pick your consoles and stuff, this will show off basically all the videos 
in this wheel. So this will show off. This is the settings. Honestly, this is the settings wheel. Um, it will show off, for example, arcade. It will show off consoles. It will show off handheld. So once you know the video kind of switches up, I'm gonna just kind of skip this video, bring it back real quick. And then after five seconds again, a track mode will activate. So as you can see, I'm inside this wheel and had Cody in it. So again, another advantage to the Raspberry Pi. The big thing on the Raspberry Pi build is shutting down the system. It's just like shutting down a PC. We'll go through the steps real quick. So on this, again, my attract mode is settings. You go into a track mode. This will be already set. I was playing around with it before, but basically it will be on shut down. So if I go real quick to a track mode, it should automatically give you shut down. You press enter or the first button on your arcade and it will shut down. There you guys have it. Honestly, there is your Raspberry Pi. Again, a buyer's guide to an arcade build. If you do message me and you ever hear me talking about Raspberry Pi builds. That right there, my friends, is a Raspberry Pi. Feel free to ask any questions. Shoot me a message. VicVP, Game Case Arcades.